Integration by parts is basically the product rule going backwards. So we're going to start out writing the product rule in this form. The derivative of u times v is equal to the second factor times the derivative of the first factor plus the first factor times the derivative of the second factor. Okay, Just so this conversation doesn't get too abstract, here's a specific example. Uh, derivative of x times sine of x, so that u represents x and v represents sine of x. And that would be according to the product rule v times du dx, which in this case is just dx by dx. The derivative of x is 1, but I'm going to keep writing it as dx over dx, plus u times dv dx. So that's a way I could write the derivative of the sine function d sine x dx. I'm going to just do a, a slight algebraic manipulation on this equation, so I'm taking this term and I'm putting it over on the left, and then the next thing I'll do is move some of the terms around. But this is just algebra, so that I end up with u times dv dx equals d by dx of uv minus v times du dx. And here's the specific example. You can study that if you're having trouble uh, following the abstract discussion. Now the next thing I'm going to do is the new part. I'm going to take this equation, I just rewrote it but with more space, because I'm going to take each term now and I'm going to integrate it with respect to x. I'm going to integrate each term with respect to x. So in our specific case, now I'm going to use the fact that the derivative of the sine function is the cosine function, so that this is x cosine x. I'm going to integrate x cosine x with respect to x, and then I'm going to take the derivative of the function x sine x, and then I'll integrate it with respect to x, and I'll get right back to x sine x, and then I'll use the fact that dx by dx is 1. Now we're one step away from the actual formula for integration by parts. So here comes the integration by parts formula. All right, where were we so far? We were at this integral of u dv dx dx and so on. The next thing I'm going to do is cancel out those dx's and that brings me to the integration by parts formula which is the integral of u dv equals uv minus the integral of v du. Notice that I used that trick of saying I'm integrating a derivative here so I just get the function right back again. That's the fundamental theorem of calculus. So we start out with something of the form integral of u dv, and we end up with uv minus something of the form integral of v du. And a skeptic might be very disappointed with that, saying it's not helpful because you're taking an integral and you're rewriting it in terms of another integral. However, if you look at our specific example, you'll notice that we've taken an integral that was hard. We took this x cosine x stuff, and we turned it into an integral that was easy, sine x. So that's how integration by parts works. It turns a difficult integral into a more easy integral. Now there are four specific types of integration by parts problems. First, I call uh, things that look like a product rule but require only a single iteration of integration by parts. The second is things that look like a product rule and require multiple iterations. The third are things that look like a product rule and are cyclic, and you'll understand this when I go through the examples. The fourth case is things that look like inverse functions. I'll talk about those one at a time, starting with product rule, single iteration. Now, here's my example, the integral of x times cosine of x dx. I'm going to use the fact that integral of u dv is uv minus integral of v du. But first I have to get this in the form of integral of u dv. So I have to identify dv and its cosine x dx because since cosine of x is the derivative of sine of x, I can say d sine of x is equal to cosine of x dx. Let me make that more clear. d sine of x divided by dx is cosine of x. If I take this equation and multiply it by dx, then I get the d sine x is the same as cosine x dx. And I'll write the rest of the now I'll write the rest of the integral. So I have something of the form integral of u dv. Now I can apply the integration by parts formula 
and I get x sine x minus the integral of sine x dx. Okay, and this was the example I was showing on the first slide. Uh, so we now have turned the difficult integral into an easy integral, and we can finish the problem. x sine x plus cosine x plus c is the answer. If you take that and differentiate it, you will get back to the original uh, integral, integrand. All right, one more example, uh, the integral of x e to the x dx. And we're going to do it the same way. e to the x dx is d e to the x. We use the integration by parts formula. It turns into an easier integral. And again, you take the box thing and differentiate it to check. Now, sometimes you might pick the wrong choice for du. For example, if you had the integral of e to the x times x dx and you used x dx as dv, your integration by parts could look like this, this red work on the bottom. Taking an integral that has a, a factor of x to the first power, and we've rewritten it as an integral that has a factor of x to the second power, we have to judge that as being worse than our original integral. And when that happens, it just alerts us to the fact that we went in the wrong direction. Instead of choosing x dx, we should have chosen e to the x dx. So be aware of that. And that's, that's the end of the description of the first example, product rule, single iteration. The second case is product rule, multiple iterations. So my example for that is the integral of x cubed cosine of x dx. Uh, we're going to once again use cosine of x dx for dv. So this is the integral of x cubed d sine of x. And once again, we use the integration by parts formula, and we turn it into x cubed sine x minus the integral of sine of x dx cubed. Now we have to interpret that as 3x squared dx, and we can rewrite this as x cubed sine x minus integral of sine x times 3x squared dx, or x cubed sine x minus 3 times integral of x squared sine x dx. Now we've taken a, an original integral in the form of x cubed cosine x, and we've turned it into an integral of the form x squared cosine x. Are we going in the right direction? Yes, but we still have to apply integration by parts another time. So, noticing that d cosine of x would be negative sine x dx, we can write this integral as the integral of x squared d cosine x, where I changed this minus to a plus to account for the negative sign, because d cosine x is equal to negative sine of x dx. And now I've used the integration by parts formula again, and I have a dx squared that is to turn into a 2x dx. And now I've taken my uh, original integral, x cubed cosine x, I've got it down to an x cosine x, which requires one more iteration, but remember we already did that. The integral of x cosine x dx was my one example of the single iteration type. And we got the answer to that. It was, it was x sine x plus cosine x plus c. So I'm going to substitute this result in for this integral, and now I can write the entire answer. x cubed sine of x plus 3x squared cosine x minus 6x sine x minus 6 cosine x plus c. Now, if that seems like a lot of work, don't worry, really, because all we're doing is we're taking successive derivatives of this factor, x cubed, and successive antiderivatives of this factor, cosine x. And instead of doing all of this writing, we could just work it out as a little table. I'll show you at the end of this video how to do that. So that, that was the end of the second example, which is product rule multiple iterations. Now we'll look at product rule type integrals that have cyclic integration by parts. And my example for that is the integral of e to the x cosine x dx. We'll choose cosine x dx again for dv. And we again use the integration by parts formula. And now d e to the x is the same as e to the x dx. And now we see that we've taken something of the form e to the x cosine x, and we've turned it into something of the form e to the x sine x dx. And that might make us feel very sad and might make us cry because it looks like we haven't made it any less complicated than the original integral. 
but let me reassure you that this is going somewhere that will be very helpful. So I'm going to take this e to the x sine x dx and I'm going to go through the same process where sine of x dx is negative d cosine of x. And I'll uh, go through integration by parts exactly as I did above. And then this turns in integral of e to the x sine x dx into something, uh, well, that looks like our original integral again, okay? Uh, when you see you got back to your original integral, you know, then you might cry even harder because now it looks like you're just going back and forth. But when I put it all together, something magical happens. The integral of e to the x cosine x dx is equal to something involving e to the x cosine x. Now, if you think that, that we don't have the answer because we've just written the unknown integral in terms of itself, well, think about the algebra problem where you have to sign itself for x, where x equals j plus k minus x. Would you give up and say, I can't solve for x because x is written in terms of itself? Or would you recognize that you could add x to both sides and divide by 2? So that's actually the situation we're in now. We can now uh, add the original integral and uh, then divide by 2 to solve for it, uh, remembering that we have to put a plus c at the end. And this is actually the answer. And if you, you should try differentiating this expression and showing that you get back to the original integrand e to the x cosine of x. It's very clever, and I think you'll enjoy it. Next case is inverse functions. So, you, sh you know, it, the, pro the process of integration by parts is suggested not only in times when you see things that look like product rules, not only for things that look like product rule, but also for things that look like inverse functions. Here's the reason for that. We have our formula integral of u dv equals uv minus integral of v du. Well, a corollary to that formula would be that the integral of y dx equals xy minus the integral of x dy. And if y is an inverse of a function we can integrate, then integrating y with respect to x that would be the inverse of integrating x with respect to y. x as a function of y is the inverse of y as a function of x. So if we know we can integrate the inverse function, then integration by parts is guaranteed to work on things of the form integral of y dx. If we know that we can integrate the inverse function of y. For example, integral of the inverse sine function. I'm going to recognize that as an inverse of a function that I can integrate. And I'll go ahead with confidence and say let dv equal dx and just use the integration by parts formula. x sine inverse of x minus the integral of x d sine inverse of x. And I'm guaranteed that when I take a derivative of the inverse sine function and rewrite the integral as x dx over square root of 1 minus x squared, I'm guaranteed that this will be integrable because it's got to be equivalent to integrating the sine function. And in fact, I can use u equals 1 minus x squared, and then I have a, a, a negative 1 half du on the top. So introducing the factor of a half, this becomes the integral of u to the negative a half, and I can integrate it exactly. And now I have the function in x sine inverse of x plus square root of 1 minus x squared plus c. Again, I encourage you to take a derivative of that. It's really fun. Okay, so one final note about integration by parts. I, I told you that the, the uh, integration by parts with multiple iterations could be done in a, in a sort of tabular way. So let me demonstrate. Uh, the uh, integral of x cubed cosine of x dx can be found very easily if you just write successive derivatives and successive antiderivatives of the respective factors. And then you combine them with these diagonal lines and you put a plus and minus alternating on each of the connecting lines and you sort of have a tabular form of the answer which is x cubed sine x plus 3x squared cosine x minus 6x sine x minus 6 cosine x and you're done because all the rest are going to be zero and this should make you feel very happy